I was just trying to see. I thought I lost my third place. I'm back. Um, next article of the headline reads, Centurion from West Virginia achieves high school diploma at 101 years old or young. Um, the brother's name is Merrill Pittman Cooper. Um, he originally attended Storrs College in Hearts Ferry, West Virginia, from 1934 through 1936. Um, he ended up having a drop out because his family moved to West Philadelphia, and then like life happened. Um, you know, we didn't get an opportunity to, um, you know, finish his education. He had a family very young, and then being living in that time, that era back then, he had to get up, work multiple jobs to sustain himself. And then you know what, what types of things we had in front of us in that era. So he just unfortunately was never, ever able to go back to high school and get that. How we survived all them years without it, that's amazing, but, you know, it just, I guess the priority wasn't there to go back, but um, it's a great story to share because it's, it's a prime example of, you know, it's never too late in life because we often feel, um, we often feel anxiety, we often feel rushed, we often feel like it's never going to happen. Um, sometimes... In life, things happen when it's supposed to, not when you wanted to. And I guess for him in this situation, that it came so late in life. But, you know, he did the work and he got his high school diploma. He could have easily got a GED, but, you know, he won his high school diploma. So join me to giving him a warm narrative podcast round of applause for his accomplishment, Brother Merrill Pittman Cooper in his high school diploma. All righty, Rudy, so on, keeping it going on. Next article, headline reads, Black siblings make history as principals at different schools but in the same district. And the two siblings' names are Tracy and Greg Pickett. And that's amazing. I said time and time again that we need educators. We really need our own schools. We really need our own colleges. We really need our own vocational training centers in every state in the United States. But, um, you know, while we're in this system, while we're dealing with this public school stuff, we definitely need more educators. So it's, often, it's always good to hear, you know, we have educators in that, you know, in that monster to, you know, represent us and to be a voice and a beacon somebody our children can, um, you know, communicate with and express themselves around them and be themselves, be who they are without having their creativity and identity suppressed. Because in these public schools, they are really just kind of dream killers for our children. It's a wonder like that so many of us do graduate from high school because it's not set up for us. The teachers don't care nothing about us. Everything is racially biased. But 
The only thing they want us to do is to play sports. You know, then it's all cool if we can play basketball or, you know, baseball, football. Then it's all good. But if we want to take some something academic, you know, that's when the discouragement comes in. That's when they, you know. But um, anyway, I didn't mean to get off on a side tangent. Um, join me in giving the warm narrative podcast round of applause for our brother and our sister, Mrs. Tracy Pickett and her brother, Mr. Greg Pickett. All righty. Last article for the evening. The headline reads, Black Harvard I think I ended up here. Black Harvard. Crypto Cal Tech and University of Chicago students graduate at higher rates than classmates all over. Um, I'm going to have to go see my source, because I don't think it's supposed to read like that. One second. Dang, what is flash? Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Okay. I'm back. So the article read Black Harvard, Princeton, Caltech, and University of Chicago students graduated at a higher rates. I'll do it one more. higher race than classmates all over the country. So that's basically like, you know, they're telling, the article is basically saying um, they all those institutions that I just named got the highest test scores in the nation, our children. You know, we're ac- excelling academically at an excelsior level, and that's more, you know, Definitely worth a uh, warm round of applause because that's an academic feat that we very rarely get um, credit for. Then I see Harvard's on there. It says Black Harvard, but uh, I don't know what Black Harvard is. I never heard of that institution. Let me punch it up right quick just to see. I'm guessing it's just like regular Harvard black students. I don't know why in the article it said black Harvard, but I'm guessing it's just um, regular Harvard, the black students at Harvard. I guess that's what it's alluding to. 
there's no institution called Black Harvard, but it said that in uh, the headline, it says Black Harvard, and I was just kind of knocking, not for a loop, but I guess what that meant, the black students at Harvard. But um, anyway, all those institutions have the highest graduates, graduate rate all over the nation. They're all, you know, our people. So we're leading the charge in academics. So definitely we got to make a warm narrative podcast. You know, round of applause. My air horn got deleted. So I'm at the, I don't know, fix this little sound effect problem by the next time I join you. So yeah, that was it for my commentary this evening on the uh, or the um, my articles here on the Narrative Podcast for this evening. And now I'm gonna um, just deliver some commentary about some random uh, some stuff going on around the world, uh, mainly about the uh, you know some more stuff about the Alabama brawl. Just some stuff I didn't know. If you knew, good for you, but this news to me, and I'm just sharing. So, first of all, I believed that the brother that got attacked in the bra was a security guard, and he was not. His name was Damian Pickett, and he was the co-captain. He was the actual like driving the boat that these other entitled people were prohibiting him from properly doing his job. So, you know, that's, you know, he tried to quote um, policy, the riverboat policy. So that's coming right from the top. He's not, he wasn't a security guard. He's like right at the top. So like, I guess the captain asked him to ask those people to move. He's a co-captain. So the captain probably either was on his break or wasn't there that day. Oh, shucks, stop doing that. Please don't (laughs) break up into three sections when I share this uh, back online because I just seen my internet go out again. I don't know. They emailed me some little funky stuff to like fix the issue, but I don't know. It didn't work, so I don't know what's up with it. That's the bad thing about an audio platform. Well, you can glitch up too when you're doing like video too. I see people do lives on YouTube. have the same technical issues. So. But um, anyway, so the brother, the other brother with the folding chair, you know, the brother that swam, they gave him the nickname Aquaman. I'm going to give him a nickname. How's this? Chair Jordan. Get it? Chair Jordan, folding chair. It. Okay, anyway. <laughs> um, so the brother with the folding chair, his name was Reggie Ray. He just recently got um, arrested for it, for the folding chair. So my commentary ain't going to be too long. You know, it's some BS, it's some selective BS, like. I don't know how he would get charged in like a melee. It was basically like self-defense. But I do think they targeted him because he struck a Caucasian woman. That's the only real reason why he's accosted. 
because he actually did nothing wrong. They locked him up because he struck a Caucasian woman. Like, let's let's just keep it all the way a thou wow. That's why he's in, you know, custody right now. Because he had he not hit that um, white woman, he would be a free man. They have that over... You know, they got a history of doing that to us. They've literally burnt, you know, black townships to the ground over a rumor that an original man was sleeping with a white woman. Like, that's their biggest pet peeve. They cannot stand that. They can't stand when they think or believe an original man is trying to do something to a white woman. Like that's why they killed Emmett Till. You know? This old white woman said he was looking at her and they killed him. So I don't know what, what triggers in the mind of most um white men when it comes to white women like what makes their blood boil so much when when they think when they just believe don't even have proof when they believe one of us has done something to their women the consequences for it like that's you know most racist um, white men's biggest pet peeve is that their daughter will marry an original man. They they would they they you know that makes them madder than anything. So this brother struck a white woman. I'm I'm kinda chuckling, it's not funny. It's I get it, you're not supposed to hit women, but in a situation like that, I think that's an exception to the rule because like everybody was hitting everybody and you know, they was up in there putting their hands on me. So they was up in there. They wasn't just innocent bystanders. And she just happened to get struck by a chair. I think he was just like, I don't believe he singled her out. He was just giving everybody the business. And she just caught it. So I feel he shouldn't be arrested for that. Another thing that I wanted to address was some statements I made um, last week um, during my full broadcast of the Narrative Podcast. Um, I went in. I got a kind of. I got kind of passionate, and what I wanted to do was bring it back into focus. Um, first and foremost, I don't advocate violence, and when I, what I was saying. I kind of like lost the moment, kind of got in my feels and, you know, went off the deep end. But underneath it, underneath my passion, what I was really just trying to say is like we need to band together to stop um, this this uh, witch hunt against our people online by these certain groups that target us and pick on us because they don't they're not outraged about any other you know group of people it's only like they want to be outraged and offended to the point they cancel somebody when it comes to our people then they want to be so you know um offended then they want to feel, they want to feel, you know, like we're singling them out and picking it on them and being intolerant of them and, you know, being abrasive towards them. And it's like, you know, and that's not the case at all. So that's all. I wasn't like trying to incite uh, violence towards those particular two communities. I was just saying they need to back off. And they need to quit that goofy-ish. Like every time they get offended online, 
they want to single our people out. You know, the other community, they want to say everything, any one of our entertainers or anybody, period, says about their community is anti-Semitic. It's just like only when one of our entertainers say it, or just any original man or original woman, again, not no actual proof that they said something anti-Semitic. They'll just, they'll just say they took it as a, um, a racial slight or a, um, they took it, you know, out of context and just because they said it was, it's anti-Semitic. So, you know, that really got me in my feels because how are you going to gatekeep the word they? How are you going to gatekeep the word they? It's not even it really implied that he was talking about that community. He just said they. Like you can't gatekeep the word they. You definitely can't gatekeep the word Jesus. Like, so you don't want, you know, black people to say the word Jesus. You're trying to gatekeep the word they and then gatekeep the word Jesus. You got to pick a struggle. You can't gatekeep both words. You can't accuse somebody of being anti-Semitic for saying the word they. And then the other community, I call it the LMNOP community, but the multiple letter community, they're always going after our people, you know, and they got to stop that too. And that's all I was saying. I wasn't trying to um, incite violence or say saying we got to like, you know, solve, solve it with violence. Because I was talking about, you know, the Atlanta brawl. I was saying we need to use that same energy, channel that same energy into rising a gut.